The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give him to him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. In his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for, who, who, for, who, for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Some of you may have seen an older movie that came out probably at least 10 or 15 years ago called Crocodile Dundee. And it starred uh, Paul Hogan, who played this uh, Aussie who was uh, from the outback. And at one point he's uh, visiting New York City and his girlfriend there, he's walking down the street with her and uh, someone comes upon them and pulls out a knife. And uh, the girlfriend says to him, be careful, he's got a knife. And he says, that's not a knife. And he pulls out this great big sword, this big, big knife that he's brought from Australia, which is five times as big, and he says, now that's a knife. That's my Aussie accent, which you'll hear only during that quote, by the way. <laughs> I was reminded of that from today's first reading. In the first reading, we hear of uh, King David, who is traveling around, and he is noticing that the Ark of the Covenant has been kept in a tent, so his plan is that he wants to build God a house. And then we hear this lengthy response afterwards with basically God saying, you're not going to be, build me a house, or that's not a house. This is a house. And he talks about this, uh, this foretelling of from his descendants will come the promised Messiah. So God says, are you the one to build a house to live in, for me to live in? The Lord will make you a house. I will raise up your offspring after you. I will establish his kingdom. It shall be established forever. So that's God's way of saying, that's not a house. That's a house. We have this ongoing uh, repeated theme throughout the scriptures of promise and fulfillment. And we see this fulfillment of that promise in uh, today's gospel reading of the Annunciation when the angel Gabriel comes and announces to Mary that she would be the mother of Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah. We hear in that passage repeated references to David. Uh, the evangelist Luke says, calls Joseph, uh, Joseph of the house of David. And the angel Gabriel himself says, you will conceive and bear a son, you are named Jesus, and the Lord will give to him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. So this promise to David was fulfilled in Jesus' descendant hundreds and hundreds of years later. We hear many names in the gospel today for Jesus. The name Jesus himself, given by the angel or given by God. The name itself means the Lord saves. We also hear Gabriel referring to Jesus as son of the most high, son of God. And he refers to his father, David. So we will later hear a repeated title for Jesus as being son of David, 
that long-awaited Messiah from the lineage of King David. A few other points of interest from this passage of the Annunciation. One is brought out in the Catechism, and that is that faith seeks understanding. We heard uh, Mary's questioning after the angel Gabriel says she will conceive. Mary says, how can this be since I'm a virgin? And uh, this is a model for us of faith seeking understanding, that it's okay for us to ask questions. It's okay to, to seek answers for the faith and what we believe. Our faith is based on reason. Our faith is not contrary to reason, but sometimes our faith goes beyond reason alone. Pope John Paul II wrote an entire, I think it was an encyclical, uh, called Fides et Ratio, or Faith and Reason, showing how these two things go together so beautifully for us. A second interesting point is that Mary's yes to God is a model for us in our Christian lives as well, that we're invited to continually say yes to God's will in our lives. And we're given the model as well of Jesus' prayer in the garden, when Jesus says, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. We're invited to trust in God. We're invited to, uh, to trust that God's will for us is best. We can only see a little narrow blinders in front of us, but God sees the big picture. And we pray that God's will will be done when we pray the Our Father. Uh, the third point of interest, with many points of interest, but one is the words of, of uh, Gabriel again at the end of the gospel passage when he says, nothing will be impossible with God. And this is a great thing for us to remember. Uh, I think sometimes we are tempted to think of God as a lot like us, but just a little bit smarter a little bit more generous, a little bit more powerful. But God is infinitely smarter. God is infinitely more generous. God is infinitely more powerful than us. And he invites us to ask, to seek, to knock. I think sometimes uh, the holding back part is on us. Often we're scared to ask where we don't think that God can do these great things. So we're invited to be bold and to ask for what it is we need. God may say yes to our surprise. Christmas is now just a day away. Tomorrow night we'll be celebrating our beginnings of our Christmas Eve Masses. And uh, the time is coming short now for us to prepare the way for this uh, Christmas, but we prepare the way all our lives for the coming of the Lord. And just to encourage us all to try and spend, spend a bit of time uh, for prayer during this next uh, little bit as we enter Christmas time. On a Friday morning, we had uh, at uh, St. Anne's Parish uh, a kindergarten class come over for some time of prayer in the small chapel there, and they brought over uh, a birthday cake for Jesus with a candle. They brought over little uh, notes that they had written for him as well, and they brought balloons. So the chapel l looked great, and it was a great and uh, gentle little reminder for us about uh, what this whole season is all about. We can get sometimes caught up in all the trappings and all the expectations of the season, uh, but simply uh, remembering that uh, Jesus' birthday is the reason for the season. So as we continue with this celebration today, let us pray that we will use this time well to prepare the way of the Lord and to remember that uh, this season is about the birthday of our Lord.